Hello and welcome back to the land of Seeker, and when we left off, we were at this town in the random middle of nowhere, basically, yeah, right out here, and there's a tournament going on, but I'm probably not going to be doing that, we are actually in a bit of a, whoa, okay, I did not realize that, okay, yeah, yeah, we are currently in a bit of a problem situation here, because you can see here, the Yarians are actually encroaching upon the Lamoka territory. And this is kind of bad. Okay, wait a minute. What's this? A courier arrives bearing a message from the ruler of our faction. He remarks on your growing reputation. <gasps> oh, that's cool. Okay, that is actually really cool. I was not expecting that one bit. I thought to myself... No way. There's not ever going to have anything uh, happening there. But no, no, no. They actually have implemented a way for us to know exactly how much renown that we need to uh, become a vassal. Well, technically, it's not exactly how much renown, but you know, you, 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 you know what I'm talking about. Anyway, the fact is, if we find where this fellow is, which I think I might be able to... Okay, yeah, that's... Mm -hmm. Yeah, have fun with that. That's all the way back where our settlement is. That is where he is at the moment. So obviously that's going to be a little bit tricky. But if we can actually make it back there, we can become a vassal. Obviously at the moment that's probably not a good idea because my mercenary contract is giving me a lot of money at the moment. And I'm very, very pleased with it. And hopefully we're going to be able to get a bit more security. Just a little bit more security as we go forward here. I'm just going to do an auto resolve or two. Gonna probably just let this guy go, actually, all things considered, because it doesn't seem as though it's actually giving me that much, kind of sadly enough. The loot is giving me the most money, um, and obviously I do need to sell some people as well, but um, yeah. I'm just hoping that by the time I actually make my way back to my settlement, I will have a decent amount of cash, so much so that I might be able to even become... A vassal and I will just be able to leave the mercenary life behind and we can maybe do something really cool then anyway let's take a look here range troops 30% cheaper to recruit and to upgrade might be kind of good so I think I'm probably gonna be taking that even if it doesn't apply to my kind of unit then at least it's um, kind of useful I guess anyway we'll go for shield bearer even though I'm not using a shield at the moment and we're also gonna be specking into roguery if you missed the previous episode I explain exactly why I am you know doing focus points into roguery skill and generally I just think it's good anyway so let's let's go in here and try out our new bow yeah actually quite a lot happened in the previous um, previous episode even though it didn't seem like it but there are these moments where Sometimes these things happen and you think to yourself, oh yes, I would love to be able to get this thing done and look at how much damage I'm dealing right now. Oh my. Hello there. Okay, yeah, so now this is going to propel me to absolute astronomical heights. It's going to be amazing because we're going to be able to get 275, or at least I can only hope that we'll get 275 into bows. Look at how easy this is now. My noble bow with 100 accuracy. It has 100 accuracy stat, and it is amazing, as you might expect. And I can also use it on a mount, so I don't even need to wait for that particular perk for me to be able to do this. Because generally, I could use a longbow, you know? I could use a longbow if I wanted to, but generally, this is just amazing. And uh, yeah, I, I actually did find a weapon that I want to use pretty badly in this marketplace next to us right here in this particular town. But unfortunately, it's so incredibly expensive. I think it's 61,000 or something like that. I highly doubt I'm going to be able to even get anywhere close to being able to afford it. I'm going to take this guy prisoner just because I'm, I'm going to see whether it's even worth me doing this. Because I found out that it seems to me like any time I try to do like a ransom or, or anything, it just doesn't work. It just doesn't work. It, there's some weird thing going on here. Because look, you can see here, 3,000, boom, gives me 910. I can only assume it's because I've just given them too many, um, too many prisoners. And that might be the reason. But that's a bit weird. To me, that's a bit weird. Because 
I don't know why it would be the case where all of a sudden having too many prisoners is a bad thing. I don't know. Maybe it's a, an effort by the developers of Bannerlord to make it so that the slave trading, ransom brokering kind of business is not as lucrative as it used to be. I don't really know because I don't think I experienced that in the previous version of the game. So it must be a new... A new feature. I don't know whether you can really call it a feature, but I guess kind of. So yeah, it's one of those. It's one of those things. So we're going to have to get used to it and maybe we're going to have to venture a little bit further away to other towns to be able to sell our prisoners. And that in itself is a bit of a pain because obviously if you are currently in enemy territory, like I am, then it's probably not going to work out too well for you because then you're going to literally have to trek all the way to a friendly town or a neutral town and it's going to be a bit of a bit of a hassle but obviously uh sometimes i don't know sometimes you just can't do that so it, it feels a bit i don't know it feels a bit cheap i don't know maybe it's just me maybe i'm i'm complaining for no reason or another because generally i do tend to do that sometimes you know i, I tend to complain about things that there really isn't really much need to complain about but I think in that aspect, I think it adds a bit too much, uh, I don't know, a bit too much busy work for my liking in regards to prisoners themselves. I don't think you should have to go to a completely different town many, many miles away just to literally sell your prisoners for a slight bit more money. Um, you know, I mean, at the moment, if you saw my, if you take that previous example, for example, I was basically just about to sell for 3,000, right? So I was about to sell for 3,000, and instead they gave me 900. So now, for me, in my, in my estimation, I don't think it would be worth it for me, in terms of, um, you know, week, uh, not weekly wages. Ah, why am I always stuck in weekly wage? terminology uh, it's all it's it's all those years of warband I suppose anyway the point is I have daily wages to pay right I have daily wages to pay I'm kind I, I was kind of hurting for money and I was really needing to make money relatively fast so the best way to do that is fighting vassals of course as you know you know this and I've demonstrated that many times before as well in in, in various series and now that's the thing. What about if I was in a situation where I needed money and I'm in a place where I can only go to one town or if I don't go to one town and I go to somewhere uh, further away, you know what's gonna happen? I'm literally going to bankrupt myself just from sheer traveling. Because if you think about it, look at this, look at this, okay? This is just an, a, a very, very brief example. Let's say, is this a town over here? I think this is a town. So let's say, yeah. So for example, I fight these guys over here. I take them prisoner and I can't sell them over here. So I run all the way over to Navia, which is the closest town to me to sell my prisoners in hope of gaining some extra cash. And my weekly wages or my daily wages, why weekly, why weekly? Come on now, head, what am I doing? Anyway, point is, it is not going to be worth it. It's going to take me a day and a half to get over here and then a day and a half to get back or somewhere along those lines. It's going to take me a pretty significant amount of time to get over there. And that's going to cost me more money than it would to just offload these prisoners in some random place. And that's it. It just doesn't seem worth it. And I can understand, okay, yeah, maybe, you know, maybe the developers of Bannerlord are trying to... Oh, look at that. Now I have a thousand again. Okay, that's kind of weird. Anyway, maybe they're trying to make it so that, you know, ransom brokering, as I say, is not as lucrative as it used to be. Maybe that's what they're trying to do. But whatever the case... If, uh, if if that is actually the thing, and um, maybe it's actually selling the, the vassals? Is it selling the vassals to the... Uh... 
I'm actually not entirely sure. Ah, I, I gained I, I gained a treasure. That's actually kind of amazing. Okay, yeah. So um, yeah, but whatever the case, we're doing okay because I am I am a mercenary at the moment. That's the only reason why we're actually doing fine. Gonna let this guy go. So if I'm understanding this correctly, if I take someone prisoner and I try to sell them at a ransom broker, I assume that reduces the amount of money that I get from that activity is that actually correct that sounds really backward to me because if you went to a ransom broker with a, uh, a high value target like a vassal for example you would expect to get more money for them right you'd expect to get more money for the overall transaction but as it stands that I, that is actually not the case okay so let's actually take a quick look here I'm doing a massive battle here now. This is actually not what I intended. I actually intended to go into a battle against only one guy. But, you know, that's what happens. And, <laughs> oh dear. This Oh, actually, you know what? I'm going to do a little bit of something something here. We're going to go over here and we're just basically going to stand on the high ground. On these, uh, on these vegetable growing patches right here. And that's literally all I'm going to do. And hopefully that's going to be... Um, Hopefully that's going to be damaging enough to the opponent for us to uh, achieve victory here. I'm a bit worried about it because, as you can see, the enemy is coming up relatively fast. But maybe we can do enough damage to them to make them think twice about coming up here, maybe? I'm not entirely sure. Are my forces actually doing something? Yeah, we're going to be in a bit of a... Maybe we're going to be in a bit of spot of bother here. I'm actually not entirely sure. Uh, you know what? Let's just do an auto-delegate and just hope that that actually works. Oh, hello. That's a lot of people. That is a lot of people. Okay, yeah, this is this is a bit problematic. Okay. Uh, try and kill some of the archers, please. Okay. Be a bit careful. Be a bit careful. Okay, not too bad. We are doing okay. Let's just say that. We are doing okay. We are not doing amazingly, but we're doing fine. Need to really kill the leaders. There we go. There's one leader. He's down. Basically, the more damage that we can do in the quickest amount of time is the way to win these kinds of battles. So hopefully my forces will not run out of arrows too soon. I'm trying to kill their crossbowmen actually. All things considered, I think that would probably be the best idea. Ah, I don't have any more arrows. Sad. That is very, very sad indeed. Yeah, but that's the point. I think if I were to replace one of my weapons with a quiver, like for example, if I were to replace my one-handed mace with a quiver, then all of a sudden I'd already, I'd be getting knocked off my horse all the time. What do you bet? That's just the curse that I have. Whenever I have a loadout that is just sheer anti-melee, I automatically get off my horse. Like, for example, right now, look at that. Imagine if I didn't have this mace right now, I'd be dead. 100%. I mean, obviously, I am dead already, anyway. I mean, I think I'm probably gonna die. But, oh, oh, wait a minute. Okay, apparently not. Apparently, I am actually surviving, amazingly enough. Oh, dear. Let's try and sidestep that. There we go. Try and use his friend's body to protect myself. Ah, I think I'm dead anyway now, though. I'd like to eliminate this guy if at all possible. Uh, can I kill him? Yes, we got him. Okay, fantastic. And now my forces actually came in for a second there. Trying to help me out a little bit, are they? Seems like it. That's actually really nice of them. Okay, this guy is trying to beat me in speed. That's not going to work. I don't think. He, mean, uh, he might, he might, because he has a bunch of people helping him, of course. So that makes bit of a difference. Ah, there we go. We were way too low in HP. Way too low in HP to, uh, you know, deal with all of those guys at the same time. Especially considering I do not have a shield either. So I'm kind of in a bit of a 
in a bit of two worlds, you know? Because on one hand, I'm kind of like a horse archer, kind of like a cavalry person with a pole arm, and then on the other hand, I'm kind of like this close quarters combat person, but I don't have enough weapon slots to be able to use a shield as well. I feel like I should be able to use a shield as well with all these other things, because the, the mace would go on my belt, right? It would go by my side. The pole arm would go on my back, along with the shield. And then obviously I'd have a bow and a quiver. Uh, maybe it is too much. <laughs> now that I think about it, yeah, might be too much. Yeah, might be, uh, you know, the proverbial Inspector Gadget of the Lamoka clan. Yes, sounds, sounds about right to me. Anyway, yeah, my forces are just going to go around in circles right here and eventually kill the enemy. And there we have it. Okay, so I actually ended up only losing nine. Wow, that's actually kind of amazing. We're certainly not expecting only nine losses right there. And I'm going to do a bit of a, um, a bit of a science experiment now. Okay, so I'm going to take these guys prisoner for the sheer fact that I'm just going to test how it works. So for example, I'm going to take these guys prisoner and then we're going to go and see what kind of money we're going to gain for selling them all right and we're going to go back to this previous town here if i can actually wait a minute can i actually even get back there without getting murdered mm, it's a bit of, it's a bit touch and go actually it's a bit touch and go we might not even be able to get back that would be very bad that would be very bad no 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 no. okay okay we are actually getting getting back here and look at that four thousand four hundred let's reward the uh, the poet Look at that, plus 15 renown, super, super nice. I love these events, by the way. The events that provide you with decent amounts of positive statistic whenever you are successful at them, I actually really like that because they don't actually reduce anything, like anything that is permanent. So for example, they don't give you a, uh, a loss of strength you know, they don't give you a loss of a, um, well, obviously strength is not actually a thing. Uh, it, well, it is, it is technically a thing. Vigor is the, is the new, the new attribute to replace strength. But for example, in the, uh, in the previous iteration of the game, Warband, obviously there was a strength stat and some mods would actually have random events that would affect your attributes permanently. Yeah, some of them would actually have that. Um, and, and in some of in some of the cases, when it was a bit more realistic, of course, they would have a way to mend the wound before it became permanent. So that was actually something quite cool, in my opinion. But yeah, um, apart from that, the permanent ones were were very very harsh. Okay, so yes, best medicine. That's what we're going to go for. We're going to go for another point in roguery right here. And I'm actually wondering whether I should go for another point in control. Considering I do use my bow a huge amount, we might as well just go ahead and do that. Thinking we might go for some more intelligence a little bit later on down the line. And my uh, roguery skill is still obviously working or trying to work as best as it possibly can. Anyway, um, yeah, so what we're going to do is we're going to sell these guys. Look at this. That, that's 1800 for selling one guy, right? And look at that, we actually did gain 1,800. So let's sell this guy. He sells for 2,000. And look at that, we gained 2,000. So now, I'm going to try something. Going to ransom all of these guys. Boom, look at that. All of those, instead of giving me 3,300, they only gave me 1,800. I'm actually wondering if I had a couple of regular units in my army... And I, I mean, a couple of regular prisoners, that is, regular unit prisoners. And I would have sold those by themselves. Would that have actually given me the full price? Because I'm actually thinking that maybe that is the reason why we are getting a reduction in the money. Maybe there's some weird calculation going on with the vassals or something like that. So when you sell a vassal, it actually doesn't... Um, doesn't really work out as intended, but anyway. Oh, your troops had a quarrel on the march and they were about to start. You decided to mediate the quarrel. Nothing happened. Okay, good. Good to know. All right, who's this guy? Oh, well, I'm just going to go in and attack him. We're basically just going to go and do a little bit of an auto-resolve here. I just want to try and continue my 
um, continue my uh, my mercenary wages basically I want to try and get as many mercenary wages as I can before uh, wait a minute wait a minute we've got to be a bit careful here Ooh. okay can we escape I mean I'm I have mostly mounted units I should be able to escape from this okay oh okay this is uh, this is a bit dangerous this is a bit dangerous now yes because obviously I have much less um, much less units than I used to. Oh yeah, there's a lot of people around here. We've got to be very careful. We have to be very, very careful. Okay, so now they've made peace with the Yan Dynasty. Okay, that means that I can now go in over here, which is actually fantastic. So we, now we don't even have to worry about them any further. And now, um, yeah, oh well, now we don't have to worry about them any further in general, because now I literally cannot, uh, can't sell them. Oh well, there we go. We'll just gain a thousand right there. And then we'll just sell all of our stuff for another 20 thousand from the loot super super nice now i'm gonna see if lotus is actually still here is she still here uh, i i i don't i don't think is she no she is actually not here really ah uh, are you serious where are you oh look at that last scene in vegetable Solomon. okay yeah uh, he's just walking around there okay so this thing where is this thief? Oh, it is all the way back there. Oh, that is way too far for my liking. Okay, you know what? I'm not going to go back there right now. I feel like we kind of have to uh, protect our home base at the moment because it feels to me... Um, you decide to ask him to help. Yeah, sure. That's absolutely fine. Okay, yeah. So what we're going to do is we're going to head back to my settlement. We're going to see just how many resources I have accrued in the time that I've been away. Because I've, I've actually been running around for quite some time. And I haven't been back to my settlement in a long while. So I should, in all likelihood, have a massive amount of stone and wood and food and all that wonderful stuff. So I should be able to build some things that are going to be very impressive indeed. So hopefully I'm gonna be able to get that next upgrade for my uh, for my marketplace. That's what I'm hoping for. Let's be very careful about all these, um, all these armies. There's the Dark Wave Knights. I think someone in the comments actually warned me about the Dark Wave Knights. They are apparently extremely, extremely dangerous. Let me actually take a quick look. Dark Wave Knights. Oh, wait a minute. These guys. Oh, I remember this fellow. He beat me in a tournament. I hate this guy. <laughs> uh, yes, yes. As you can quite clearly tell. A, a single Dark Wave Knight has 275 in one-handed skill. Yeah, they're very dangerous. Let's be very careful of them then, shall, shall we? Yes, let's... Uh, Let's not get ourselves embroiled in a fight with them just yet. I think I might be able to beat them if I have a decent amount of eggplants. But as it stands right now, I obviously don't have that many. And the Lamoka are being completely obliterated right now, which is very, very saddening to me indeed. Anyway, there we go. We can finally upgrade our market. That is exactly what I'll do. There we go. And uh, I, uh, yeah, 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 that's, that's fine. That's fine. Okay, so that is going to be done. Uh, hopefully relatively soon, uh, well, obviously within a day. And in the meantime, I'm probably going to recruit some additional people. Do I have any additional people here? No, I just have these guys. Okay, yeah, so I have 52 eggplants. Okay, so I'm going to need to recruit some more people. So let me see. Do you think I can actually level up beans all the way from all the way from tier one or should i just go straight for potatoes maybe i should go for straight straight for potatoes uh, some people apparently were a little bit confused as well um in previous episodes about my naming structure well these are all vegetables if you didn't know um but yeah because uh, someone was confused about it not going from potatoes into fries and to be fair uh fries are, are probably probably a bit tastier to be fair maybe 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 yeah yeah maybe something like that anyway um i'm actually thinking maybe we should actually just go straight for turnips how much how much do i have to spend to recruit turnips 400 that's maybe a little bit too expensive considering these are 139 so i'm gonna go for 60 of these guys it's going to cost me 8,000. That's actually not even that much. That's not too bad. And my marketplace is about to be done quite soon as well. Oh yeah, I should probably go ahead and just sell over here. Oh, we've made peace with the Yarians now as well. Okay. 
Right, that seems pretty decent. And now we can sell all of this stuff. Let's just sell all of the grain and a lot of the fish as well. There we go. Okay, so let's actually just take a quick look at the map and see exactly who we are at war against now. Okay, so we're just at war against these guys. So now we've made peace with the Aryans. The Aryans actually made some pretty good inroads against our territory here. As you can see, they took Wasaki, which is obviously really not good for us. And they also took uh, Be 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 Yang. Be Yang? Yeah, I, I guess something like that. And otherwise, we do have a situation with this castle over here. I'm actually wondering whether I should become a vassal right now. My main party wages are 3,000. Ooh. My main party wages are 3,000. That is very expensive. I'm going to say yes. Let's do this. He's going to give me some units as well, which are actually pretty cool. But they are just going to... Oh, wait a minute. He's giving me Lamoka full armor. Well, I don't actually need this. <gasps> He's giving me a Nodachi. Oh, that's amazing. Oh, I like it. He's also giving me these other things. Ooh, I like it. Oh, hello there. I can actually sell this for 39000 if if bad things happen to me. All right, so I'm actually thinking... I would love to use this two-handed. Who else uses two-handed in my party? I don't think anyone uses two-handed. This is actually really sad to me that people do not use two-handed in my party. Uh, yeah, they do not. Okay, none of them use two-handed. That is very sad. Very, very sad indeed. Okay, well, what can I do? Mm, I think I will, yeah, I will exchange the Pagan Master Longstaff with the Pike, and we'll try the Pike out a little bit. I think that might be quite fun, right? It does swing damage. Oh, wait a minute. It does 88 piercing? Okay, that actually might be super, super strong. And I might want to get some more arrows as well instead of the mace. Maybe instead of the mace. Eh, yeah, why not? Why not? Let's try it out and see what happens. So we're just going to do that. Oh, yeah. Also, I do need to go and um, I do need to speak to Malethphon real fast because I'd like to give her some better armor. She's currently wearing some terrible armor. So actually Darian is wearing terrible armor. So let's actually give Darian this armor for the moment. Because I think this is actually worse than what Melethon was wearing. Yeah, it is, as you can see. So yeah, that's actually pretty good. Okay. So without further ado, I am now a full vassal with the Lamoka, which is a bit problematic in many ways. And let me now... Oh, look, there's actually a noble bow here. That's hilarious. Uh, yeah, that's sad. Okay, well, whatever the case. Uh, oh my, wow, Lamoka arrows do so much damage, but look at the stack amount. They literally only have 16. Wow, that's that's pretty crazy. All right, so yeah, what we're going to do is we're going to go for some stacked bodkin arrows, and we're just going to add that over there. And there we have it. Okay, so we're pretty nicely geared out now, and I also have a bunch of units, The uh, these guys. I'm actually thinking that I might just put those in my garrison. I don't think I have to pay for my garrison. So I'm going to put them over in there because you never know. Maybe if I get defeated or something like that, it would be a nice idea to have something to fall back on, if you know what I mean. So we're going to have something. So if I get defeated, I can come here and I can take out these units and then I might be able to level up some more custom units with, you know... Uh, the Lamoka unit supporting them and, and stuff like that. So may maybe that would make sense. Maybe it would. Maybe it wouldn't. I don't really know. But whatever the case, I'm thinking, do I want to capture this castle? I really don't. All things considered, I really don't. It is not something that I care about that much. Um, I would like to take a town. Do you think I could take this town over here? I'm going <laughs> to... Oh my. This is, this is going to be super risky. This is going to be super, super risky. Not, notwithstanding that I actually need to participate in, to, in some fights, because otherwise I'm not going to have any money very soon. So that might be a bit uh, problematic in itself. But let's actually just take a quick look. They only have three... They don't have that many. They don't have that much here. And look at this. These units are super easy for us to deal with as well. Look at this guy. All right, we might be able to do something here. We might be able to do something. Okay, so I'm going to let it hinge on the fact if we lose too many units during this fight. 
So if we lose too many I'm units so during this fight, and I'm just going to do an auto delegate right here because we do have a, a lot of we have a lot of potatoes. <laughs> we have a lot of potatoes. Thank you very much. Okay, yeah. So otherwise, we're just going to head straight on in here. I will try to do some damage to their back lines as much as I possibly can. These, these ah, this is going to be very difficult. I can barely see anything. Okay, yeah, they are actually doing fantastically well of defending themselves. Okay, let's just be a bit careful. Don't really want to get my horse murdered instantly, considering I have so many arrows right now. We really just need to fire them off, just try and get as many kills as possible. This is actually a really nice way of getting experience as well in your archery skill. And I'm, I'm very pleased to see that Melethvon is actually getting kills too. Pretty happy with that. And, you know, it actually dawned on me very, uh, very recently that um, I should have called myself a vegetable. A vegetable. So, in other words, if I killed someone, it would say, a vegetable shot this guy and, and killed him. You know, that, that, that kind of thing. That would have been, uh, I, I think that would have been a lot, more, a lot funnier, but oh well. Whatever the case, you know, my main, you know, my, my naming conventions are absolutely fantastic as it, as it is, right? Obviously that is complete sarcasm, but yes. Anyway, let me see if I can, can I, oh, never mind. Whoa, okay, that guy just got murdered. And I think we are absolutely fine here. So for me specifically, I just need to take a look at the garrison now. And I think I should then be able to head on in to the siege and maybe even be able to take it obviously my engineering skill is very bad i'm i can only hope that amaliana actually has a good engineering skill i think she does or darian i think darian has a good engineering skill someone does at least do they oh now i'm actually now i'm oh no now i'm actually questioning whether that is indeed the case uh i think that might not actually be the case i think they might be I think I might be the engineer. If I am the engineer, this is going to go very badly indeed. Okay, you decide to explore. Oh, uh, yeah, okay, yeah. I, I don't know. I'm getting mixed up with all of these different events now because there are so many. All right, so these guys want to fight me, right? I'm going to assume that they probably want to fight. How many people in here? Only 233. How many, What do they have, though? That's the point. What do they have? They have militia. And that's that's pretty much it. They just have militia. So let's let's besiege the town and see what happens. If one of these Blood Lotus revenge parties decides to attack me, I will basically just run away instantly. Uh, that's that's pretty much all I can really do. You can now use all bows on horseback. I don't really care about that anymore. But mounted archers in your formation gain a plus 30 to bow skill. I think that is probably the best, the better thing to take. But obviously I'm not entirely sure whether it gets applied even. So I'm just going to take it just in case. It's pretty much a just in case particular option right now. And uh, yeah, my engineering skill is not even leveling up. That is really, really funny. Yeah. I don't know why my engineering skill is not leveling up, by the way. It takes so long. Uh, okay, well, seems to me like I will have to take this guy out anyway, because he, he, I, he, I think he's actually, isn't he the leader? Isn't he the leader or something like that? I'm actually not entirely sure, but whatever the case, it's a good idea to try and eliminate these stronger vassals. This guy is, is running around with, a, well, with around 160 units, and he is going to absolutely massacre us if one other vassal turns up. So we do really need to make sure that he doesn't get the initiative. So let's see what I can do about harassing their back line once again. I really love the way that our arrows fly through the air with the fire mod on. I, I do not have the fire mod installed, by the way. That is included in the Land of Seeker mod, which is amazing in itself. And can I maybe hit a couple of these skirmishers? Seems like Mogrians actually have a bunch of horse archers which is kind of interesting. I guess I should probably expect that, considering Mogrians actually do have some of the best horses available. So that kind of makes sense, right? There we go. 
All right. I think that is, uh, yeah, that is pretty much all she wrote. Don't think the enemy can really do much more here. Yes. Okay, I should try on my pike, shouldn't I? I should try on my pike if I don't get my horse killed. Oh, this is amazing. See, this is what I was talking about. This is the kind of weapon I was talking about. It has a slight bit more reach to it than the staff had, and you can see how much damage it deals. It is just so, so good. And obviously, bear in mind, this is a piercing weapon as well. This is not a blunt weapon or anything, but it is a piercing weapon. So obviously it has high penetration values versus highly armored targets. So even if I am attacking a high tier unit, I should be able to do pretty considerable damage. And it doesn't lose as much as blunt weapons do against lower tier units. So when you see me do 157 damage to one of these recruits, and the staff would probably do, um, I don't know, 60, 80, 100, maybe somewhere along those lines. And obviously it very much depends on your speed bonus, of course, and all that stuff. Um, you know, you can kind of see the difference in, in that regard. But anyway, there's this one guy. He's giving us the runaround, so I'm just going to try and shoot him. What? You, how did that miss? I have no idea. Oh, well, never mind. And there we go. There is a victory for us against Chagan. Very nice indeed. Okay, yeah, so I actually don't think this is too bad gonna take him prisoner and I'm gonna let this guy apparently this guy was taken prisoner as well so it's good to know that we released him and I'm just gonna be capturing or should we say rescuing a bunch of their prisoners as well which is actually really nice because that means I will be able to go back to my garrison and place those in there because once again it might be one of those times where it's a good idea to place units into the garrison just in case the worst were to happen and of course that means me being defeated and uh, I'm getting a I'm getting a feeling you know that feeling that's, that's sort of like uh, I don't know whether you get that or whether it's just me but I get a feeling in the back of my mind that always kind of creeps in and kind of says hey you know what you might get defeated relatively soon here you might want to be a bit careful and hilariously enough that is always when I get overconfident and I make the mistake and then the defeat happens so, yeah, those are the kinds of times where you have to be really, really careful. And I was getting that feeling just around about there because I saw a bunch of armies nearby and I thought, okay, you know what? I'm going to just cut my losses and run a little bit here. And we've got some decent, well, I wouldn't say we have decent money or anything like that. We don't really have decent money right now, but we have some good units. We have uh, no fief to our name just yet. I'm ho I was hopeful to actually take that town, but maybe we're going to have to do that in a uh, in an upcoming episode. There's seven thousand. We can sell Chagan for that as well. Look at that, seven thousand. Very very nice. And we can also sell the rest of our gear. And there's another thirteen thousand right there too. Great. All right, so we're back up at 72,000. We're seemingly doing quite nicely, but we are going to have to head back to Keshkarin and see if we can actually take that. But I'm going to wait for the next episode to do that. I thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.